This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice, let us be glad. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice in salvation. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice, let us be glad. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice in salvation. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice, let us be glad. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice in salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well, good evening, brothers and sisters, to this wonderful solemnity of the Ascension of the Lord. Our Mass this evening is being offered for Theo Wright, who passed away last week and whose requiem was in Te Araha. Uh, his funeral was in Te Araha, and Theo is the sister of Nellie Mark, a parishioner of ours here at St. Thomas Aquinas. So we pray for Theo's soul and also for his family, particularly Nellie, as they um, grieve the loss of a brother and we ask the Lord to bless them with comfort and healing and strength and hope at this time. I'd also like to offer this Mass for Cass O'Connor, who is going to Waikato Hospital and will have a very serious operation tomorrow morning. So we pray for the surgeons and caregivers responsible um, for her here and we ask that Jesus our physician and healer will work his healing powers through their hands. The ascension of Jesus is the climax of his victory over sin and death. It is a day of joy and hope. Jesus wants us to share in his victory it's important to realize that he hasn't left us, but is still with us, helping us in our struggles. Lord, you give us strength in times of weakness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you give us consolation in times of sorrow. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you give us light in times of darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who believe that your only begotten Son, our Redeemer, 
ascended this day to the heavens, may in spirit dwell already in heavenly realms. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In my earlier work, Theophilus, I dealt with everything Jesus had done and taught from the beginning until the day he gave his instructions to the apostles he had chosen through the Holy Spirit and was taken up to heaven. He had shown himself alive to them after his passion by many demonstrations. For forty days he had continued to appear to them and tell them about the kingdom of God. When he had been at table with them, he had told them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for what the Father had promised. It is, he had said, what you have heard me speak about. John baptized you with water, but, but you, not many days from now, will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now having met together, they asked him, Lord, has the time come? Are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know times or dates that the Father has decided by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and then you will be my witnesses, not only in Jerusalem, but throughout Judea and Samaria, and indeed, to the ends of the earth. As he said this, he was lifted up while they looked on, and a cloud took him from their sight. They were still staring into the sky when suddenly two men in white were standing near them, and they said, Why are you men from Galilee standing here looking into the sky? Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, this same Jesus will come back in the same way as you have seen him go there. The Word of the Lord. Our response this evening for our psalm, God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All peoples clap your hands, cry to God with shouts of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, we must fear, great King of over all the earth. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God goes up with shouts of joy, the Lord goes up with trumpet blast. Sing praise for God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God is King of all the earth, sing praise with all your skill. God is King over the nations, God reigns on his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and perception of what is revealed to bring you to full knowledge of him. May he enlighten the eyes of your mind so that you can see what hope his call holds for you. What rich glories he has promised the saints will inherit and how infinitely great is the power that he has exercised for us as believers. 
This you can tell from the strength of his power at work in Christ, when he used it to raise him from the dead and to make him sit at his right hand in heaven, far above every sovereignty, authority, power or domination, or any other name that can be named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. He has put all things under his feet and made him as the ruler of everything, the head of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills the whole of creation. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Go and teach all people my gospel. I am with you always until the end of the world. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples set out for Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had arranged to meet them. When they saw him, they fell down before him, though some hesitated. Jesus came up and spoke to them. He said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teach them to observe all the commands I gave you. And know that I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. The Gospel of the Lord. When Jesus returned to heaven after his death and resurrection, the archangel Gabriel was surprised to see him back so soon. After all, 33 years is not a long time when you take into um, consideration the importance and enormity of the task that Jesus had been given to do. Back so soon, Gabriel said to Jesus. Well, I would have stayed longer, but they crucified me, Jesus replied. Oh, so they crucified you, said Gabriel. That means you failed. Not necessarily, said Jesus. You see, I called together a small group of disciples. They will carry on my work. And what if they should fail? asked Gabriel. I have no other plans, Jesus answered. Brothers and sisters, Jesus had preached the gospel only to Israel. But now, as we have just heard in Matthew's gospel this evening, he commissions the apostles to preach the gospel to all nations. They must have, 
They must have felt overwhelmed by such a daunting task. But Jesus promised that he would not leave them unaided. He would send them the Holy Spirit. We hear this promise in the Acts of the Apostles when he says, But you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit, which will come upon you, and then you will be my witnesses. Now, although it looked as if he was leaving them forever to return to his Father, he is not abandoning them. This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, the same Jesus will come back in the same way as you have seen him go there. We hear this towards the end of the Acts of the Apostles. Brothers and sisters, we need to understand the ascension in these terms. The resurrection, the return to God the Father in heaven, and the sending of the Holy Spirit of Jesus as his liberation from all restrictions of time and space. It does not represent his removal from the earth, but his constant presence everywhere on earth. During this, his earthly ministry, he could only be in one place at a time. It's very clear as we listen to the stories of Jesus' ministry. But now united with God, he is present wherever God is present. And that is everywhere. Every part of the universe comes within his redeeming, healing embrace. In one of his sermons on the Ascension, Pope Leo the Great remarks, The Lord's visible presence has now passed into the sacraments of the Church. He is now present in his divinity, which we can embrace through faith. So through the power of the Holy Spirit in word and sacrament, Christ, brothers and sisters, touches us at the deepest levels of our soul and spirit. We do not have to see Christ as the disciples saw him while walking this earth to know him deeply. In reality, Christ is now closer to us than ever he was when he walked this earth with his disciples. We are never separated from his presence. The ascension then, brothers and sisters, is not just about Jesus' absence, but rather it's about a different kind of presence. Jesus leaves in a dramatic way, enveloped by the cloud, to emphasize that from now on, he will be with us in a new kind of way. Not visually, but in his spiritual sacramental presence. Our experience of Christ is not like that of the disciples who saw him who touched him, who ate with him. Our experience of the risen Lord is like everyone since then who have not seen with their eyes but have real contact with Christ through faith, through the sacraments, through prayer and the life of the church. That is why Jesus gives the great commission to spread the gospel. People will encounter Jesus through the life of the church. And who is the church? You and me, wherever we are. He has no body now on earth but ours. He has no hands but ours to raise up the fallen. No feet but ours to seek out the lost. No eyes but ours to see the silent tears of the suffering. No ears but ours to listen to the lonely. No tongue but ours to speak the word of comfort to the sad. And no heart but ours to love the unloved. Brothers and sisters, pray. Pray that we simply be 
his faithful witnesses. Let's together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With joy and hope in our hearts because of the victory of Christ, let us pray in the name of him who now sits at the right hand of the Father in glory. Our response this evening to our prayers of the faithful, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians, that they may be faithful witnesses for Christ before the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold public office, that they may work for justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those without hope, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each other, that our lives bear witness to the hope we carry in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, that we may be rooted in love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our own special needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant that we may follow your Son faithfully on earth and come to share his glory in heaven. We ask this through the same Christ our Lord. Amen.
Bless thy you, Lord God of all creation, thanks to your goodness the spread we offer, fruit of the earth, work of our hands, it will become the bread of life. Blessed be God, blessed be God, blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed be God, blessed be God, blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, thanks to your goodness the swine we offer, fruit of the vine, work of our hands, it will become the cup of joy. Blessed be God, blessed be God, blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed be God, blessed be God, blessed be God forever. Amen. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer sacrifice now and supplication, O Lord, to, to honour the wondrous ascension of your Son, Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, 
and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day in which your only begotten Son, our Lord, placed at the right hand of your glory our weak human nature, which he had united to himself, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sextus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks and praise, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, 
the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation, <coughs> be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and counting, kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some sheer in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Caritas et amor, ubi caritas Deus ibiens, ubi caritas et amor, ubi caritas Deus Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we move into this week, let us pray. Pray that we will simply be the Lord's faithful witnesses to whoever we meet, wherever we are throughout this world. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia.